Hello everyone. It is March 13th and I'm making another video of painting with Amico Velvet Underglazes on Bisqueware. And um, I know it's been a while. Some people were asking, um, where have you been? <laughs> uh, well, one of the things is um, we've been renovating a bathroom. Have you guys ever renovated a bathroom? And you think, oh, it's going to be easy. You know, just remove the vanity, put some new tile in. And, you know, it's always going to be good. <laughs> it's turned into... It's turned into a fiasco. So that's where I've been. And it's not done. I mean, it it's like, it's gutted right now. <laughs> so, so that's, uh, but I've, I got a show coming up um, in May. So I got to get my, my Heine in gear and um, start getting some pots. Because I've, I've made a bunch of pots um, where I teach at. You know, I have to, I work three days a week teaching and, um, so I'm making pots constantly. They're building up. So I have all the pots. I just need to glaze them all. Anyway, so, um, all right. So let me lower you down. And like I said, I'm using Amico Velvet Underglazes. I have a few Speedball, um, but I had a couple of them stick. Um, so I don't know. I, I Right now, I, I'm, I'm sure there's nothing wrong with any of them. Um, I, I think the main problem is if you put them on a little too thick, um, they can bubble, they can stick to the kiln shelf, um, you know, but you need, they just can't be applied too thick, I don't think. Um, at least that's been my experience. I don't know, I've been listening to blogs and things and people have been complaining about all sorts of things, um, you know, them burning out and uh, some of them do the green. I know it burns brown sometimes and I've actually had the red um, burn out and leave just orange, you know. Um, and I've had the white bubble on the dark clay, so, so I'm still testing, I'm still, still, uh, still testing that, so, but I hope you guys are having a great day. It is, uh, Sunday, and it's cold, but at least the sun is out, as you can see in the background, that's my backyard. Um, I might see some birdies flying around, I got a little bit of bird feeder, or bird seed left, they've been, the squirrels and the raccoons and the deer the deer I come out in the middle of the night and the deer are back there trying to get the bird feeder down so I think when they're when it's out they're on their own you have to fend for themselves and find some worms so all right well I've wasted enough of your time so let's lower them down I'll show you what I'm doing there we go all right so this is going to be a pretty loose, pretty loose uh, design on here. Um, it's inspired by a painting I saw. So what I'm going to do is, and these are my, in case you haven't seen one of my videos before, I put my underglazes in this tray and then I, I just sprinkle with a little bit of water when I leave, when I'm done and just close the lid and um it works great so because i like to use them kind of as like watercolors and um so yeah yeah okay so i've i have um trimmed this and i have sanded it down a little bit so it's fairly smooth um, and when i trim it i take um, a rubber rib uh, i think i have one here but you can use a a metal rib or anything and, and as it's you're trimming you know press all that grog back into the clay I use clay with grog um, because I hand build also and it's much easier to hand build if you've got some grog in your clay so let's see the easiest way to do this and still let you guys see I'm not sure if I'm gonna do any stamps on this one I've got all my stamps out too um, so I'm gonna have to see how this turns out. Um, what I'm going to kind of do is go from dark to light. And this, what I'm using here is a, one of my favorite brushes is, um, it's a Mako 
number eight a fan brush these things they're they're up to like ten dollars i think nine or ten dollars now but boy they're worth it they are they're they're just great for glazing um so when i'm done with this and it's dry i will just go ahead and put the um clear on right away and i just you know i load up my fan brush so it's filled with clear glaze zinc free clear glaze um, and you just basically glide it over very softly when you're doing the clear and um, as long as you're not um, you know rubbing I've never had mine smear I, I know people have been uh, you know complaining about it smearing but I've I've never had that problem I, so like I said this is kind of a they're gonna be oh geez Get in the camera, Lisa. Now, let me lay this here. Gosh, how much of that did you miss? <laughs> Just talking away and painting and... But yeah, so, okay. See, but I don't like when it... If you, if you don't get them really full... <laughs> They look like uh, crow's feet or chicken's feet. Yeah. So, eh, maybe I'll trade that one in for, let's see, a little bit a wider one. Now, this is um, just a cheap um, one I got at Hobby Lobby. And I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to stay with the same color. Um, but I think I'm going to add, let me see here, um, I need a little bit of water here. We uh we've had such crazy weather here. We had 70 degrees last week, and then um, over the weekend we had a couple inches of snow. We went from 72 degrees down to like 20, 22 degrees, I think it was. All my daffodils are coming up, and my snow drops, and there we go. So with underglazes, um, you know, a lot of people really water them down and use them. And um, you can, if you want a really pale, uh, pale, soft, pale colors, um, you know, that works. You got to be careful, though, because some of them, you know, if you don't put on at least a couple coats, um, they do, like I said, they, I know the green turns brown it you know likes to burn out um unless you're doing low fire now this is a b mix b mix five with grog so i fired a cone five with a um like a 15 minute hold so it's probably getting like five and a half um my witness cones are they're they're all the way down, so they're getting a little bit hotter than in the back just a little bit. There we go. Um, so the witness cones are getting they're all the way down, so they're probably it's probably getting probably five and a half. But I'd like to start um, firing a cone six and. But the Stainer 266 clay I've been using um, doesn't like to go to cone six. A lot of dark clays will bloat at cone six. But I was told that Kentucky Mudworks Brown Bear does not. Now, I talked to somebody there, 
and they said to fire, do a slow glaze fire. But you know, Scott, Scott Kilns, they suggest the medium glaze fire. So for their, for just for their, you know, their kilns and most, most commercial, you know, glazes. And that's why I fire too when I'm where I teach at. Um, I fired a cone five with a 15 minute hold and and we use all scut kilns there but I think um, I'm going to switch over our dark clay there from Stainer 266 to Kentucky Mudworks Brown Bear and um, and start firing a cone six um, you know and that I think I think you know in some glazes like the Amico commercial glazes I think you have a, um, I think the glazes will mature better at cone six. You just gotta be careful because the hotter they get, they can run. And then, um, then you get a whole nother problem. And when you have new, new people who haven't glazed before, um, you gotta really be careful what they're, what they're glazing and how much glaze they're putting on and, the rule of thumb that I've always told them is, you know, people say, oh, how many coats? How many coats? And it's not really about how many coats to put on. Amico always says, you know, three coats. But really, it's about the thickness. Because you could put on three thick coats, and it'll run like crazy. Or three thin coats, and then it's too thin. I have a little bit of white here I'm dabbing on. But so your glaze really for regular commercial glazes, not not under glazes. Uh, for regular commercial glazes, your your glaze should be really no thicker than a dime. Unless you want it to run. Which, you know, some people do. Just make sure you have it set up on a piece of old bisque ware or something so that it doesn't stick to the shelf. Okay, so I'm gonna put a little bit of yellow in here. I keep I know I keep lifting this up out of the picture. Okay, so I guess that I'm gonna add I think I'm gonna add another color to blue. Um, I kind of like this little sponge. This this blue here in the bottom is royal blue by Amico. This this bright color, and then I added black with the royal blue to make a darker color here at the bottom. Um, and this is just their white up top. And then I'm going to dab on a little bit of their turquoise. Just to add, I don't know how much of this you'll be able to even see when I'm done. But if, I don't, I like um, a lot of color. I don't like um, when it's, I don't know, one color, people paint on one color and trying to create, you know, more interest so that when you're looking at the bowl, it's interesting to look at. It's not just a flat color. Okay. So I got that done. I'm going to roll up my sleeves here. I think I'm going to put uh, a little bit of this blue on the bottom too. I have a little bit of the, the white on my brush still, which is kind of nice. There we go. There. I think that looks good. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is do really loose um, flowers. I'm going to move this back just a little bit. Um... I'm going to do the flowers first and then 
draw the green stems up to the flowers. Um, when I when I want, I want just like loose loose yellow flowers. Almost um, like sun, like the sun. I'm not sure how I'm going to um, outline them with the black yet. I've been trying to, most people figure this out before they start painting, but <laughs> usually I just wing it. And the colors, um, you will be able to see the blue through here a little bit, um, but not too much. I mean, I, I want some of the blue to uh, show through, that's fine. I hope everything is going good with you guys. I wish I could make more videos. I, I don't have a lot of light in this room. This house we bought is kind of a weird house where there's no electric in the ceiling. So, um, and it's all floor lamps and so I don't know. We don't have a lot of, a lot of good lighting. So when nighttime comes, it's the lighting in here isn't very good. So this is a bright yellow, it's called, um, I think this is a super bright, it's called intense yellow. So the, this is intense yellow. And this is just a soft yellow. I'm not, I'm not sure the name of that because I ran out and I don't have any more. So underglazes have been hard to find. Well, all glazes have been hard to find. Um, I went out to our local clay supplier and could not find um, could not find any Kentucky brown bear clay. So hopefully they'll hopefully they'll get that back in soon. But so if you guys have any questions, um, feel free to comment underneath this video um and i usually you know usually my phone comes up on my phone pretty quick and i can answer it pretty quick um if i don't answer it somehow i missed it and sometimes i can't figure out how to go back to find it so just you know ask me again <laughs> now darn i didn't want one down there i'm talking i'm not paying attention well that's okay I mean, really. It never really turned out exactly how I plan or how I, you know, because I have an idea in my head. But, you know, when I'm putting them on here, just kind of, just kind of wing it a little bit. So, as soon, like I said, as soon as this is dry, um, well, I shouldn't say as soon as, but a few hours after it's dry, um, I will put a zinc free clear on it and you want to make sure it's zinc free because zinc can interact with, um, some of the other glaze colors. So you want to make sure it's zinc free and, um, and then you don't want any chunks of the underglaze. Um, it does, uh. I don't know, this was something they were talking about on the, uh, I don't know if you've heard of Sue McCloyd, McLeod, I mean, Sue McLeod. She has a a page on, on Facebook called Understanding, Understanding Glazes with Sue. So I recently found her on YouTube and been listening to some of her talk. She is uh, excellent when it comes to glazes. I mean, she really knows her glazes and the chemistry. And I was trying to listen to a lot of her videos on 
issues with underglazes and glazes and things and she uh, really knows what she's she's very very um, intelligent about that very very experienced and uh, really enjoyed listening to her but apparently you know a lot of people have been having some issues with these underglazes and 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 really all underglazes not just um, not just one one brand or anything like that and I and I you know and I think I really do think it's thickness um, because if you ever notice if your underglaze gets too thick when you go to cover it with your clear glaze uh, the clear glaze or the underglaze just sucks up the clear glaze and um, and you have a you have like a, a rough spot so I try to make sure that 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 happens if I have a you know like a a bump you know um, I try to make sure that I scrape that off because you have to go back and sand it down and reglaze if if it misses your eye and it goes into the kiln like that and then um, you know, especially if it's for uh, food, you know, it wouldn't really be, I wouldn't really call it food safe if um, you've got a, a bare spot because it could absorb the food, you know, and create bacteria. But <clears throat> some of you have been sending me some of your work and um, you guys are doing such a good job your work looks beautiful and always you know it's if anybody says your work doesn't look nice um, don't listen to them <laughs> I just you know Facebook can, can be a rough place. People think that they know everything on there and um, tend to be kind of critical. And art is very subjective. I mean, there are all different kinds of art. And I can't say that I like it all. That doesn't matter whether I like it or not. It's still art. And, you know, somebody's going to love it doesn't matter what one person thinks so let's see so I can't say if this is turning out exactly what I what I had in mind but I think it'll be okay when I'm done. We really never know until it comes out of the kiln. And I don't have a picture of this. Um, move that back a little bit. I don't have a picture of this finished because this is the first piece I've done. This, this camera mount I bought is terrible. I should have. It's on this long arm. It just doesn't stay put. Anyway, um, this is the first one I've done for my kiln firing, so I didn't want to wait, you know, two more weeks to post the video. I had someone contact me yesterday wanting to know why I haven't posted a video. I think that was Katie. <laughs> if you're listening, Katie. Yesterday was a crazy day around here. Um, some more. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping I can upload this video tonight. This is Sunday, May. What I say, May thirteenth. So hopefully, I'll get it uploaded tonight. But our internet's out, 
because uh, my dear sweet husband um, hired these tree guys to trim our trees. We have three huge oak trees outside. And they not only trimmed them, but they cut half them down. And they look like, oh my gosh, I was just sick. I was absolutely sick. I'm still sick about it. I hate to even go outside and look at them. They look like stalks of celery sticking out of the ground now instead of big oak trees with, that have been there a hundred years, all their branches. But I can't glue the branches back on, so that's why. So I was going to do a video yesterday. So there you go. I was going to do a video yesterday, but I was so upset about the trees. I thought, mm, no, I'm not going to. I didn't have it in me. So I'm trying not to go outside and look at them because it just uh, makes me sick to see all the branches cut off by trees. Men. Oh. Let's see. I don't like that white line there. That white outline. I can't wait for spring. I love spring is one of my favorite times of year. All my flowers start coming up. If they, well, the flowers that survive. I don't know, do you have deer where you are? The deer like to eat just about everything. Our deer, my gosh, they are, if they don't eat the flowers, the moles do. <laughs> oh, I have huge flower gardens and the moles just, my gosh. I guess they eat the roots. Because the flowers just disappeared. It's crazy. And my dog Sophie, she's pretty good at, um, well, she's gotten a few of the moles. But. They're still out there. I think this year I'm going to plant uh, more bushes. Let's see here. if you guys can even really see what I'm doing. I'm just kind of layering um, these different yellow flowers. Let's see. There we go. I don't know if you can see that or not. I hope the blue stays uh, really blue. I think it will. It usually does. Usually the blue gets uh, real bright, like a bright blue. And this is on bisqueware. And like I said, this will be fired to cone about five and a half. I've been testing out different clears. Um, the one I'm going to use again is uh, 
Jessica Putnam Phillips, 2167. I was actually listening to some videos about mixing glazes and talks about uh, really just how exact you kind of have to be when you're mixing them. And I'm not really an exact kind of person. So I'm going to have to be really careful the next time just to make sure that I'm um, measuring them exactly. And I, I mean, I have a digital scale, so I'm, you know, making them in a digital, with a digital scale. But the problem is, um, you know, some sticks in the tray that you're, um, you know, measuring them in. And you're trying to get out every little bit of, uh, every little bit of chemicals, you know. So I'm going to, I don't know. Hmm. I don't know what that dark color is. How do I get that in there? I've got specks all on the inside. I may just add a bunch of specks. Hmm. But I wanted to add a little bit of color to the rim. So it looks a little more uniform across the, the top edge. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the inside yet. Hmm. Okay, so I think now, I think I'm going to add some stems and some flowers. I'm going to go to my avocado green. <laughs> there, Amico's um, um, Amico velvets, they are more translucent than their lugs or their LUGs. So the LUGs have a little more pigment and they're a little bit more what they call opaque. So I was trying to order some of those and just such a shortage. And they don't have all the colors either, but, um, but I was going to try some of those. So that's why with these, you know, you kind of got to make sure you have, especially this brown, I'm sorry, it's uh, the green, uh, you have to kind of make sure that it's got a good three coats because it likes to turn burn brown. It's really turning out pretty. I hope you can see all the colors. Can't wait to see this one fired. So what I do is I kind of go around the bowl, add my colors, and then when I get back around, they're going to be dry. Um, and then you can put the second coat on, and then just keep going around and add more color as you go. And that's why I like when they dry out a little bit. Um, when they dry out, obviously the you know the water evaporates and you have much more pigment. And um, so they go on a little bit thicker, which I like. I'm tempted not to put the black on here, but gosh, you know, you know how I love to outline stuff. It just, I don't know, it just makes things pop. Makes the colors pop. Oh, goodness. 
touching the uh, touching the paper towels over there and yeah so here yesterday here we had tree grinders going all day long and then they hit our internet line so we have no which was our phone line but of course we have cell phones anyway but they knocked out our phone line, our internet line, the dog fence isn't working, the electric dog fence. <laughs> so yesterday was, oh, not good, not good. I think they're coming tomorrow to fix our internet. Thank goodness I have it on my cell phone because I'd be going crazy. And of course we stream our TV, so we have no TV. Um, no, no internet, no TV. But we do have a couple of our TVs on, um, just like one is cheap antenna things. But uh, yeah, yesterday I just, I just wanted to cry yesterday. Whew. Okay, let's see here. Gosh, I, like, I really like that. Let me put another coat of this green on just to make sure. I'm going to go around. And I think, um, I think I'm going to add just a little bit of white to some of them. Just like I said, to give them some, some depth, some definition. I don't like that stark white. It's not really stark white, but I'm going to add a little bit of green to it so it's not quite as, not quite as bright. There we go. Hope you guys are all getting ready for shows. You sell your stuff online or do you sell it at shows? I uh, I do have an Etsy shop, but <laughs> if you've looked at it, you probably realize there's not a whole lot of stuff in it. I am just, um, I'm much better selling it at shows. I do about, oh, I guess about six, about six shows a year. Um, I'll do one here at the house in May, um, and then I've got one May 7th, and then I'm going to have one here at the house, let's see, May, uh, April, May, June, I gotta, I have to find some more, I guess, to get in, um, but it's so hard, the shipping is so hard, and then, you know, everything that I make really is all very different you know unique so it just takes forever to take pictures of every single thing and I'm not really good about that but if you see something that you want um, you know I will video the kiln opening and then just you know take a screenshot as it comes out the kiln and say hey I'm interested in that and I can always put it in my Etsy shop and you can buy it that way so, okay, so this is what it looks like so far. I don't know if you can... I don't mind if you have a kid's watercolor, almost. So, on the inside, hmm. The inside looks so stark, doesn't it? Hmm. 
gosh, I don't know. I don't know what to do about the inside. Let's, uh, I know I should have these things planned out, shouldn't I? I think I'm going to do something along the top here. <laughs> my sponge and I think I'll do a flower down in the center maybe just um I don't know where I got this little sponge at, but it's the cutest darn thing. I bet I could have got it at uh, my local pottery supply store, maybe. I've had it for such a long time. I really haven't used it all that much. Okay, so let's see. Get the yellow back. Let's um let's just do one let's just do one big flower in here. I know. They started out when I first started look at the design, I was thinking they were a bunch of suns. They weren't really flowers. But everything I do in bulk ends up looking like flowers because I love flowers. They're just so pretty. And there's so many different kinds too. I don't hear my dollies too much today. I guess her in with my husband. Now that he's retired, he is always home. <laughs> always home. It's not always a good thing. Especially when the Amazon truck comes. <laughs> Oh, goodness, goodness, goodness. Okay, I'm going to make some light yellow in here. Oh, I don't know if you saw that I made, I made all these uh, cute little succulent pots and air plant pots. So, I guess I'm going to have to break down and order some more air plants. I don't know. Uh, I've killed two batches of them now. I don't know why, but the air plants just do not like me. But I've tried. Try to be nice. I think I kill them with kindness. Give them a little drink of water. But I guess they don't want a drink of water. And, uh, I don't know. Next thing you know, they're bellied up. Darn things. People keep saying, oh, you can't kill an airplane. Well, yes, you can. <laughs> so I got all these planters, but I keep killing the airplanes <laughs> that are supposed to go in them. Oh, goodness. So, yes, yeah, so I guess I should probably order some more airplanes. So as you can tell, I'm just kind of layering this on here, not in any real um, fashion. There we go. It's just kind of loosely. Now I think what I'm going to do, I think I am going to try to figure out, uh, I think I'm going to, you know what, I'm going to, um, I'm not really usually very good at this 
sprinkling thing. I don't know why, but I'm trying to from there we go. I'm trying to flick some color in here, and I don't know if you'll be able to see this either, but. Oh gosh, got some blobs. Oh lovely, there's some green and blue on this brush, so we got a whole bunch of different colors on here. Oh. Kind of fun. And I'm gonna let's see. Okay, clean that up. Can you see the little dots in there? I think this is, I think when you flick dots and stuff, it kind of um, makes it look more uh, rustic, I guess. Um, so let's see, I've got some lettering, some rubber stamps here. And I'm trying to find some, oh, I know what I can do. Where'd those go? I guess they'll work. I got some uh, transfers. Although the words are a little bit bigger than what I thought. So I'll show you these. Whoops. These are from um, Plum Island Transfers. Which... And I know the words are backwards because it's just the way the these uh, phone cameras film, but um, but you can get the. Can you see how big that is? I mean, it's a huge sheet. Let me see if I can get back here a little bit. Look how big that is. <laughs> I guess you can kind of see that. Um, but anyway, so they're. They're words. So if you aren't good at writing words on your uh, pottery with a pen, you know, with a brush or anything, well, let's see if I can find my scissors here. There we go. Um, you can just put these words on there. So let's see if this works. Um, all sorts of little. They're act, they're a little um, larger. Like I said, than what I thought, but um, it's kind of imagine, seek truth, love, grace. I don't know what what do I want on here? Maybe uh, believe, create, spread joy. Let me create. We like peace. After what's um going on in the world today. I don't know. Keep praying for uh, peace for Ukraine. My heart goes out to that country. My heart breaks for that country. Okay, so let's see if... Uh, Now, transfers you can put on bisqueware or greenware. Um, honestly, I think I, I think they it, they work a little better on greenware. When I taught a class on this, um, um, they they seem to work really well in a greenware. I guess that's enough words. I was thinking true. I'm gonna cut out the word love here because we all gotta love one another. <laughs> I put a peace sign in there, remind me of the that was that the seventies when everybody's doing the peace sign. A lot of you probably weren't even bored. <laughs> Okay, so let's see here. Now, 
I'm going to rinse out this tiny little sponge. And by the time I'm putting these on, um, hopefully um, the paint will be dry enough for me to go over with my black my black um, Amico Velvet Underglaze. Now Zyam, this is from Zyam. X-I-E-M. It's a number 20 tip. And uh, this is my favorite. I like that this is shorter. I, I feel like I can control uh, the tip better. Um, so I use Amico Velvet Jet Black in here. And I do add a touch of water. Um, you don't want so much water that when you turn it upside down it drips. You don't want that. Um, but if it's too thick, um, you know, it, it clogs up constantly. And you don't want that either. So it's, you know, they're fickle. Okay, so I'm going to put this inside here. Let's see if you can see that. i got this tilted up a little bit. Like I said, I got these from Plum Island transfers. Okay, so I'm going to put that on there. And then I got the word believe. I'm not sure how many I can fit on here. I'm just kind of kind of winging it. And so what I'm doing is I'm just taking a damp sponge and I'm going to sponge those on there and you don't want to rub because um, the rubbing could smear the underglaze because transfers are made with underglaze on rice paper and you can make your own transfers um, a newsprint works the same way kind of. Um, Katie Miller has a really nice class on that. I took that. Um, there's a lot of nice online classes. Um, I think it's called, the one is the Ceramic School. Ah, I think um, Paul. Okay, well, there's a Josh something, a Paul Blaze, B-L-A-I-S. Um, I'm not sure which one's on the Ceramic School or which one's on the, um, what's the other one? can't think of the name of it now but if you really want to know make a comment and all but they have you know they have two hour classes for like 35 or 39 dollars from you know these really well known very well experienced potters um, and you can watch them over and over again now this word says spread I don't know I don't know if that looks good by itself. Spread. Hmm. That could be a little controversial. We'll, we'll set that one aside. That would be good in a sentence, maybe. How about create? Create. I'm going to be a word short, though, because I think... Let me put create in here. Dampen my sponge. And so... Yeah, so the water's going to loosen up this underglaze for these words and uh, the pot will suck it in and when I pull this off you could actually fire it with them on there I don't think it would well if you were bisque firing these have already been bisqued so these, uh, I wouldn't want that to go into a glaze fine, obviously, because I'm going to put a clear glaze over this when it's dry. But I'm just going to let those sit on there. I gotta, I'm going to have to cut out one more word. Let's see. I like the word faith. Although that's a different uh, font. Let's see here. Truth. Oh, imagine. Imagine. That's a, that's a good one. All right. I'm 
You hear the click, click, click of little toenails. It's my my dog Ernie walking around. He's my fifteen year old my fifteen year old uh, Yorkie. Who's oh there he goes. <laughs> Can you hear that? <laughs> He's mostly blind and mostly deaf. And he just wanders around and around and around and around. Kind of drives you crazy sometimes. But I have three dogs. Um, two Yorkies and a Brittany. Ernie, Sophie, and Archie. Archie and Ernie. Ar Ernie is Archie's papa. And they're both the Yorkies. They're full-size Yorkies, though. And then Sophie's the Brittany. She's the big girl. She's the baby of them, though. <laughs> In every sense of the word. <laughs> so I can tell these are... Um, they must be sticking and they're they're smearing a little bit so I'm adding I don't want to add any more water but I don't actually don't mind that they've um, not they really haven't smeared but I can tell the underglaze underneath has um, they're not as sharp the letters aren't as sharp on the edges but that's fine with me I think it's a softer look so I'm fine with that Okay, so well, I wonder if I should do some leaves. I didn't do any leaves on the inside. I didn't really do any leaves on the outside. They're just some stems. Hmm. I think I'm going to let it go. I always put leaves, don't I? Okay. Um, what am I going to do? Lisa, what are you going to do? Make it up as I go. That's what. So I'll do the sides since those should be really dry. Whoops. Um, I mean, I should have done one on the bottom. I always do something on the bottom. You know, if you're buying underglazes, and, um, you know, underglazes are expensive. They do have the little two-ounce bottles, which um, I would say that's, you know, that's a nice way to go to, to buy little bottles to start out with first to see if you like those. They have little two-ounce bottles. But, you know, if you, if you want to really experiment, um, you can, I would suggest buying... You know, the primaries, yellow, blue, red, white, and black. And then you can just mix your own because you can mix these um, just like watercolors. And that's what I do here. Some of these are mixed. You know, I've added colors to them or uh, make something a little bit darker, a little bit lighter. There we go. I think that's good. That's good, I guess. I would I would paint this, but I probably um, always end up sanding them a little bit when they come out of the kiln, and then you you know you just basically sanding it off, but you end up sanding the underglaze off. But I don't like how it's stark white there either. So we'll add a little bit here, huh? There we go. Yeah, I don't know if I like that or not. Like I said, most of it will probably get sanded off when I get it out of the kiln. Okay, so... Let's do, how long have I got? Oh gosh, we're over an hour. 
I don't know when Facebook kicks you off. Oh, gosh, Lisa, you've already taken the tip off or the, the pin. Okay, so let's see here. Hmm. All right, well. Let me know what you think. Should I have left it alone and no black? It's just so hard for me to leave them alone. Trying to keep it kind of loose so that um, it has such a nice loose uh, feeling to it. I don't want to really lose that, so I don't want to. I'm just using a, um, a sponge here to clean my tip off. So when you're using these applicator bottles, if you're putting it on fresh underglaze, uh, meaning you haven't bisked it yet, one of the really important parts is to remember to squeeze the bottle as you're putting it on and try to go away from, you know, pull it this way. If you're, if you're, you know, trying to go this way you're, you're just gonna fill the tip with underglaze and get it clogged up there's something about adding the black there's I gotta make sure I don't smear it as I'm going around I'm trying to hold it up here so you guys can see I think this is going to turn out really pretty Hopefully the clear won't cloud up. I've been having some issues with it clouding. I know we were talking about that before. I have to make sure there's not enough, I don't, I'm not putting too much silica. Make sure I measure very accurately. Um, also, they say it can be under fired, but the last time I put uh, witness kiln, that witness, uh, Things, witness cones in my kiln. I can't talk and draw at the same time. Um, they were perfect. So I, I find it hard to believe that I'm not, uh, that I'm under firing. But, but you know, I don't, I don't, I don't think I put them on every single shelf. Sometimes I do. Like if I think the, the elements are getting old, um, if I'm having issues, I'll put more underglaze, uh, underglaze, jeez, put more witness cones in. But uh, the next time I fire, I'm going to try to fire a little hotter. Um, and see if that's the problem. And then, of course, um, 
you don't want to fire or you don't want to put it on your, your clear on too thick. I would say, you know, two coats of clear is all you need. And again, you know, two coats of fairly thin clear, not two coats of thick clear. It's turned out pretty good. So this is sorry this is taking so long. I get the one thing nice about underglazes is, is that you can basically see what it's going to turn out like when I'm done. Like the colors might be a little brighter, but other than that, it's it pretty much, you know, pretty much turns out the way you put it on, the way you see it when it's done. Okay, so the flowers are done. All right, now I'm going to do the. I got to make sure I don't smear. Now, let's see. I think what I'm going to do is turn it upside down. Oh, let me do the one in the bottom. If you've hung in this long, thank you. If you like my channel, please share and subscribe. I am, um, as you know, I don't, I don't do a whole lot of videos. Um, I feel like you guys get bored of me painting, but I think this summer I put my wheel outside the back. And do some wheel some wheel throwing videos I did one on plates I don't know if you saw that an easy peasy way to make plates I learned that from uh, a man in our Cincinnati Clay Alliance pottery group named Dennis Allen he's a very good potter he doesn't do a whole lot of videos though Gosh, I hope this uh, I mean, it should turn out the way it looks, right? <laughs> they usually do, but they do, you know, like I said, the, the colors do can change, like the brown, the green. Hopefully, it will stay really green. Hopefully, it won't turn brown. My tip's starting to clog. I'm trying to be careful not to. Try to be careful not to get a clog, but I 
I could I could just glaze this all day. This is my favorite part of pottery. Used to be I hated glazing, and I thought if you hate glazing, then you're doing something wrong. So I switched from I switched from regular glazes, although I do have a ton of them still, to mostly this hand painting, and I just I just love it. Did I miss a spot there? Oh no, it's just light. So there is the bowl. I'm going to do the inside real quick. So let me do the inside. And then I have to pull off the uh, the rice paper, the transfers. I hope you guys are having fun watching this. I'm sure having fun painting it. <laughs> pretty happy with it. Let me know what you think of it. I should have enough done to do a have them in a kiln within a week. So there's the inside. And now I'm going to Let's see. I'm going to pick off these transfers. Yeah, they went on pretty good. I've never used uh, Plum Island transfers before. So I usually use uh, Ellen transfers. Hers are very, hers are really good. The um, ink they use at Ellen Transfers is uh, very dark, so I like that. They show up really well. So, you can see that. I was going to write in there, kind of, I don't know. What do you think of the transfers? I should have written, handwritten. You know what I can do? I should probably stop it. No. There we go. What do you think? Whoops. I almost dropped it. I hope I didn't just smear. I'm getting my hands in the underglaze. Oh, Lisa's. I'll show you what I'm doing here in a minute. I'm just trying to connect these words. The words just seemed like they were like, you know, like out there. They weren't connected. So see what you think. So now they're all connected. So I think I'm really happy with that. So that is it for today. I might uh, might do another video of another one, but uh, but I am back. Oh, the sun's still shining. There we are. <laughs> so so thanks for watching. Um, really happy with how that turned out. Um, again, they're Amico Velvet Underglazes, and I'm going to put. Um, I just mixed up some 2167. That's what the name of it is. Uh, zinc free clear. Um, it's a recipe from Jessica Putnam Phillips, <clears throat> and I've always had really good luck with it. Um, 
my last batch, it clouded a little bit, but I, I'm thinking now maybe it was too thick or maybe it was under fired. So I'm going to give that another try, but I'm going to wait till these. I probably, since I'm going to do a whole bunch of these, I'll just wait till tomorrow to put a clear on them. Um, so, but yeah, I'm happy how that turned out. So like I said, if you like my videos, please subscribe. It helps me out and please share. But um, thanks for watching.